the Bible, what is it worth? Basic instructions before leaving earth. Life is full of struggles and it is void. But we are made in the image of God. Lord, I have to praise you to the moon and back. I don't see anything wrong with that. Lord, it's me you help. Lord, it's me you kept. Lord, it's me you move. Lord, it's me you move. Lord, it's me you touch. I love you so much. Oh, my Lord, I have to say thank you. Open my eyes. What do I see? Have I inventoried my life lately? What's on the Holy Bible study and discussion with Jerry? Oh, Lordy, Lordy, to God goes the glory. God goes the glory, the glory, the glory. All right, welcome to Holy Bible Study and Discussion with Jerry. Our mission to provide the knowledge that will train sisters and brothers in Christ to spread God's love and create disciples. Our vision to share all resources that will aid in the knowledge necessary for the building of God's kingdom. The adversary does not know what to do with those who possess integrity. We are not human beings on a spiritual journey. On the contrary, we are spiritual beings on a human journey. With that being said, we will open this Holy Bible study session up with prayer. So please join in. O Holy Eternal Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It is once again that we come unto you as humble as we know how, realizing that you are the one and only true God. We thank you for your presence, which can never be denied. Your word is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our path. In the entrance of your word, there was light. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of your mouth. Thank you for your continued graces and mercies. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, welcome to HBS and DWJ Podcast. I am Jerry Joyce, your host. Our scripture of the week is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17, King James Version. He is the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof erreth. All right, now here... um. The person who listens to godly advice, as we can find in Proverbs 9, chapter 9, gives themselves a better likelihood of uh, success and longevity than those who ignore wisdom. All right, now those who follow Christ's teachings can um, enjoy a truly meaningful life right now. And we can find this information in John chapter 10. And eternal life beyond the grave. We can find this. We can also find this uh, meaningful. Alright now. The uh, person who uh, refuses to be corrected. As we can find in Proverbs chapter 9. Um, verses 7 and 8. And continues the wrong path. Through life sets a bad example. And in many cases. Others would be tempted to follow that pattern. And for that reason, scripture warns against becoming um, close with those who hate God and his truth. Now, in this, this, this is found, this information is found in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. But when, when it talks about hating God and his truth, it's not necessarily that they're speaking out against God, but it's the way that they live, you know, their livelihood. It's not, if it's not in a godly way, it's a hate toward God because it's a, it's a life of sin. Now, uh, through the truths contained in God's word, uh, the, though the truths contained in God's word offer forgiveness and life, as we can find in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, the people defined as scoffers, as found in uh, Proverbs chapter 1, make a uh, litany of excuses for rejecting that message. And um, this comes in the form of false ac accusations or of contradiction, misleading criticisms, rejection of biblical morality, uh, or claims of irrelevance, period. Now, some uh, simply reject the Bible because it, it exposes their sin and makes them uncomfortable. So, and you know, well, 
All right, and this is found in, uh, we can find information on this in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 11 through 13, 2 Peter uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 19, and Psalm chapter 119, or book 119, and chapter, in uh, verse 105. All right, now, unfortunately, many self-labeled experts with uh, little legitimate knowledge of the Bible ridicule it and substitute faulty human reasoning in its place. All right, now, um, let's see here. Um, se um, seemingly educated or not, such critics of the Bible lead others astray. All right, now, it was something, I can't remember what it was I was going to say, but uh, it had something to do with... Uh, the rejection of the Bible. Oh, yeah, because it exposes people's sins. Yeah, uh, and that's part of growth. All right, as far as um, some simply reject the Bible because it exposes their sin and makes them uncomfortable. Now, when we think about this, this situation, growth requires us to be uncomfortable. So if we are comfortable, we don't aspire to, to do better, and we don't aspire for positive change. And uh, we have to be uncomfortable in order to grow or in, or, or in order to make positive changes in our lives. So that part of it's, it's especially, it just especially reached out to me about some simply rejecting the Bible because it exposes their sin and makes them uncomfortable. That's, that's, yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, I found that to be true in my life. And as I you know, uh, continue to grow in life, I find myself in um, uncomfortable positions. So I'm not trying to make this about me, but I, I just, it just touched me in a way where I had to explain that. And I probably haven't, I know I haven't explained it as deep as I could, but uh, we must move on. And uh, hopefully somebody can relate to what I'm saying. All right, now we'll move on to what our topic is. Our topic today is Noah's Ark Building Instructions Discussions. Uh, Noah's Ark Building Instructions Discussion. All right, now, in the uh, previous verse, God revealed to Noah that he would destroy all of humanity for their violence. What other details were given, we do not know. For our purposes, this is all scripture has revealed. Now, God launches into specific instructions to Noah, describing exactly how to how to build the ark. And, um, and once again, um, what's recorded here in the Bible is not likely a complete transcript of God's discussion with Noah. Rather, it tells us the bare bones basics of what this man is learning from God. All right now, uh, as far as that is concerned, I mean, the Bible would be so long, we'll never be able to read it all, you know, if every detail was given about every account that is in the Bible. All right, now, even with the instructions to follow, the text does not provide every detail needed to complete the instruction of the ark. And it does, but it does show us, though, that God's directions to Noah were very specific. So, you know, the specific details is what we see. And um, God cared that Noah execute the construction of this craft according to God's particular plan. And strictly speaking, God does not tell Noah to build a boat. He tells Noah to build an ark. And it's possible that the word ark means box or chest. This same term is used to describe the vessel used to carry the Ten Commandments by Israel after leaving Egypt. Um, I mean, it contained more than just the Ten Commandments. You know, it had a jar of manna in there and, rod, and um, Aaron's rod as well. But speaking of that, you can find information uh, um, as far as this goes in Exodus chapter 25. And uh, maybe a little further where it goes into deeper detail. But in reference to the ark built by Noah, there is no mention made of sails or oars or a rudder. This craft is meant to just float 
and uh, you know, not travel by its own force. I mean, by by uh, what do you call it? Uh, by other um, instruments. It's just made to just float. All right, now the dimensions given to Noah in the following verses describe a giant rectangular box and at one point in history skeptics laughed at the idea of such a craft being seaworthy because of its size I, I, I think or maybe the way it was constructed but now however the proportions of large cargo ships are extremely similar to the outlines of the ark or you know of Noah's ark to be specific and uh, Noah is told to build it with gopher wood a material we aren't entirely sure of, but some scholars believe this is actually a reference to cedar or cypress, while others think it might be um, from a now extinct tree. But however, either way, it's a substance appropriate for the craft built for this purpose. Furthermore, Noah is directed to make rooms or nests inside the ark as well as to seal the spaces between the wood with pitch, both inside and outside of the structure. It should be noted that, in the context of the story, it's unlikely that Noah was expected to build this ark only using his own two hands. Just as the owner of a company can be said to have built something, when much of the labor is done by others, it seems reasonable to assume Noah used the help of his sons and probably others to construct this ark. And um, in this passage, God has informed Noah of his plan to destroy the entire human race, except for Noah and his family. God has also begun to describe the ark, a large wooden box which Noah is to use to preserve his family and certain animals from the flood. And um, a cubit is a measure of length equal to approximately 18 inches or about 46 centimeters. A cubit was traditionally thought to be the length of a man's e elbow or from a man's elbow to the tip of his fingers with his hand extended. While that may sound vague to modern ears, it was not uncommon in ancient days to use body parts as measuring sticks. And the concept of uh, universal Objective measurements such as a, a the modern meter was simply not practical at that point in uh, human history. Now, using one cubit or 18 inches or 46 uh, centimeters, the craft God describes to Noah would be about 450 feet or 137 meters long and 75 feet or 23 meters wide and 45 feet or 15 meters high. This would make the arc one and a half times as long as an American football field or slightly longer than a regulation fight for soccer field. All right, now, it would have been somewhere around as tall as a four and a half story building, even by modern standards. If this was a ship, it would be a big ship, despite the size. There's no reason to think Noah could not have constructed this arc. God nowhere orders Noah to use only his two hands. So, as with any other project, it's common sense to assume Noah had help from his sons and probably others in constructing this massive vessel. This would be no different than a contractor or business owner building something through oversight of others. Here, God concludes his very general instruction to Noah about how to build the ark. All right, now, in the previous verses, Noah was instructed to make the ark about 450 feet or 137 meters long by 75 feet or 23 meters wide by 45 feet or 14 meters high. This is based on the traditional length of a cubit, as I said before, from the distance of the top of the finger to the elbow, approximately 18 inches or 46 centimeters. All right, now... Let's move on to the materials. As far as materials, Noah is told to use gopher wood, which is an unknown material. And as I said before, some scholars think this was either cedar or cypress, 
Now God tells Noah to construct a roof with an opening of about one cubit all the way around the top. In addition, the ark would have three decks and a single door on one side of it. Now this door would presumably need to be large enough to accommodate the entrance and exit of all the animals who would be making the voyage with Noah and his family. And once again, the details given here are not meant to tell us uh, who are the reader or readers how to construct our own ark. Rather, they are general summaries of the specific instructions given to Noah. All right. Now, with that being said, we will move on to our next section. Do you have the complexion for the protection? It is now time for our life reflection. All right, according to the the theologyofwork.org, that's the theologyofwork.org. In case the commandments, statutes, and other and ordinances in God's covenant might come to seem like nothing but a burden to Israel, Moses reminds us that their primary purpose is to bless us. Now, if you heed these ordinances by diligently observing them, the Lord your God will maintain you with the covenant loyalty that he has swore to your ancestors. He will love you, bless you, and multiply you. He will bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground, your grain and your wine and your oil, the increase of your cattle and the issue of your flock, in the land that he swore to your ancestors to give you. And this information is found in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 12 and 13. All right, now, if you obey the Lord your God, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your livestock, both the increase of your cattle and the issue of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will make you abound in prosperity. The fruit of your womb in the fruit of your livestock and in the fruit of your ground in the land that the Lord swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open for you his rich storehouse, the heavens, to give the rain of your land in its season and to bless all your undertakings. This information is found in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 2 through 7 as well as verses 11 and 12. All right, now, obeying the commandment is meant to be a source of blessing, prosperity, joy, and health for God's people. Now, as Paul says, the law is holy and the commandment is holy and and, and just as good and just and good. So the law is holy and the commandment is holy, just and good. All right. And that's found in Romans chapter seven, verse 12. And the Love is the fulfilling of the law, found in Romans chapter 13, verse 10. Now, this is not meant to be confused with the so-called prosperity gospel, which incorrectly claims that God inevitably uh, brings wealth and health to uh, individuals who gain his favor. It does not mean that if God's people lived according to his covenant, the world would be a better place for everyone. Of course, the Christian witness is that we are not capable of fulfilling the law through any power we possess, or we possess, I rather. That is why there is a, a new covenant in Christ, because we, we couldn't be perfect ourselves. We needed a perfect person, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. 
in which God's grace is made available to us through Christ's death. And don't forget, resurrection. Rather than being limited by our own obedience, by living in Christ, we find that we are able to love and serve God. And that we do, after all, receive the blessings described by Moses in part in the uh, present day and in full when Christ brings God's kingdom to fulfillment. All right, now, in in any case, uh, obedience to God's covenant is the overarching theme running through the book of Deuteronomy. And in addition to these three extended passages, the theme is sounded on many brief occasions throughout the book. And Moses returns to uh, it in final speech at the end of his life in chapters uh, 29 and 30. All right. Hey, bro. What's up? It's now time for something to think about. All right. All right, if you happen to find yourself wanting to support a minority business, try a dozen cousins. Diverse foods with shared origins. Our products are inspired by traditional black and Latino recipes from throughout the Americas. For hundreds of years, African, Spanish, and indigenous peoples mixed and interacted creating dozens of subcultures and leaving behind a thread that connects the food, art, and music of this region. All right, let's move on to made with the best ingredients. We use wholesome, easy to recognize ingredients like beans, vegetables, and nutrient-dense avocado oil while avoiding GMOs and artificial flavors. We want to make sure that we are all around long enough to enjoy time with our grandkids and we believe that starts with a diet that is heavy on real food and light on junk all right now let's move on and talk about we're on a mission to inspire families of all backgrounds to eat better food and live longer more vibrant lives unfortunately many people need a little extra help towards that goal. Americans living under living in underserved communities face real obstacles to living a healthy lifestyle. As a result, they are at far greater risk for obesity, diabetes, and other diet related illnesses. In order to help reverse this trend, we provide an annual grant and volunteer support to non-profit organizations that are working to eliminate socio-economic health disparities in the U.S. All right, now you can find this business online at a dozen cousins.com. That is a dozen cousins.com. Hey, bro, what time is it, man? It's now time to answer comments from HBS and DWJ website. All right, let's start off with Anastasia. Anastasia says, You have pointed out the very specific instructions Noah received to build the ark. Mankind's relationship with God is not just a matter of acknowledging the Creator's existence or a matter of worship, but following instructions. In this biblical account, it was the plan for the ark. For Israel, it was following the Ten Commandments and the resulting Hebraic law. Humanity and the animal kingdom were all tied to the specific instructions Noah was willing to follow. Mankind is still asked to remember that they are in God's image. All right. Hello, Anastasia. Thank you for taking the time to comment on this portion of study and episode. Blessings, my friend. All right, let's move on to Shelby Rose. Shelby Rose says, This article was fascinating. What sparked your interest in the ARC specifically? I mean, uh, I had never really considered the smell on the ARC, but 
that had to be that had to have been terrible alright let me read this again alright Shelby Rose says this article was fascinating what sparked your interest in the arc specifically I had never really considered the smell on the arc but that had to be have been terrible Okay, isn't it cool how God gives us the instructions for what we need? All right, hello, Shelby. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for, uh, for stopping by and sharing your interest and your co- comment. All right, now, when starting this site, I, I wanted to share the things that, uh, well, when starting the website, we're on a podcast right now, which um, uh, turned in this podcast is what, came out of the website and then the store came after the podcast so when starting the website i wanted to share the things that i have been learning and continuing to uh, grow on and share them with the rest of the world now uh, my sparked interest is actually in studying the holy bible scriptures as well as continuing to build my best personal relationship with god all right. Now, warm regards to you, my friend. All right. Let's move on to Skamalka. Skamalka says, As someone new to this biblical narrative about Noah's Ark, I find it fascinating and full of interesting details. My question is about materials used for building the Ark. In the article, it mentions that Noah is instructed to build the Ark with gopher wood. But there seems to be some uncertainty about what exactly this wood is. Some scholars believe it could be cedar or cypress, while others think it might be from an extinct tree. I'm curious to know why there is uncertainty about the type of wood used in the construction of the ark. Is there any specific reason why the term gopher wood is not clearly defined in the Bible or historical records? Hmm... And how did scholars arrive at the possibilities of cedar or cypress as potential candidates for this material used? Hmm. Is there any archaeological evidence that ancient text or is there any archaeological evidence or ancient text that provide insights into this matter? Or is it mainly a matter of interpretation and de- deduction based on the context and geographical location mentioned in the text. Hmm. <sighs> All right. Hello again, Skamalka. Thank you for continuing to stop by the HBS and DWJ website turned podcast to comment on additional episodes. All right. Now, the precise kind of wood is uncertain since the word gopher is not a translation, but uh, listen to this. It's a transliteration. That is a literal rendering of the sounds of the original Hebrew word. Aha. Uh-huh. There are related spe- species to be found in China and Northern California, but um, botanists no of uh, no similar wood anywhere else in the world now in in an area of florida some farmers use gopher wood so to speak for fence posts because it is light yet very strong and it outlasts other wood exposed to the elements all right Now, I hope this clears up your uncertainty about the type of wood used in the construction of the ark. And blessings, my friend. All right. But for now, that's what Noah's Ark Building Instructions Discussion is all about. All right. Now, with that being said, we will close out with prayer. All right. Oh, Holy Eternal Father. Son, Holy Spirit, it is once again that we come unto you as humble as we know how, realizing that you are the eternal supreme being who created and preserves all things. We continue to understand that you are supreme immortal power. 
the one and only true God, and besides you there is no other. Thank you for allowing your one and only begotten Son to be the mediator between us and the separation of death. We realize that you allowed our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to conquer the grave by claiming victory over it and taking the sting out of death. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for blessing us with another building block from this Holy Bible study session. Thank you for your continued graces and mercies. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you all for tuning in. The United States, the Philippines, Saudi Arabia, Canada, Nigeria, the United Kingdom, Hong Kong, the United Arab Emirates, Japan, Singapore, Greece, South Korea, South Africa, Australia, Ghana, France, Malaysia, Malta, Mexico, Nigeria, Spain, Asia, Beijing, Bangladesh, Belgium, Botswana, Brazil, Bulgaria, Colombia, Czechia, Dominican Republic, Finland, Germany, Grenada, Hong Kong, India, Indonesia, Ireland, Israel, Italy, Jamaica, Kenya, Kosovo, Lesotho, Liberia, Netherlands, New Zealand, Pakistan, Peru, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Singapore, South Korea, Sri Lanka. Thank you all for your support. HBS and DWJ is eternally grateful. Please stay tuned for other discussions of the show. You can message HBS and DWJ at 704-412-8692. That's 704-412-8692. You can find HBS and DWJ podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible, Cashbox, Deezer, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, GeoSafe. You can find HBS and DWJ's most anywhere you receive your podcast. You can also find HBS and DWJ on our website at www.GodInOurLivesEveryday.com. That's www.GodInOurLivesEveryday.com. Or just hashtag HBS and DWJ. That's hashtag HBS and DWJ. Don't forget to check out the HBS and DWJ store on GodInOurLivesEveryday.com. And you can also find us on Facebook at HBS and DWJ. All right. Remember to put God first and everything else will follow. Appreciate your steps in life. They are the reason you can look back at where you came from. To God goes the glory, the glory, glory. <laughs>